Hello everybody, welcome to the 6th AWS Origins VPS tutorial video series uh, where we left off I was showing you guys how you could run programs or multiple programs in your, uh, uh, your either your AWS or your VPS uh, server but I ended with the caveat that if you log out of your user account or you close out of your terminal or you lose an internet connection or something uh, what's going to happen is it's going to hang up that script and everything's going to you know, stop so the next thing that you need, you can do to uh, conquer that is use the command no hook, which literally stands for no hangup. Uh, so the way that you can do something like that is you could say, uh, for example, no hook python um, running one dot pi, and then you could put you know the ampersand on there. And now what that's going to do is it's going to run your running one dot pi in the background. And as it does it, it's going to put the output, any output that it has, it'll put, yeah, it says right here, uh, no hub, ignoring all the input and appending output to no hub.out. So it's also going to ignore any input I give um, here. So now, while well, that's running in the background, I can do anything else I want. I can go into Python, print high. Uh, oops, can't do that, but I can do this, right? And so now I can do other things while this is running in the background. Now, if we ls here, uh, oops, sorry, we got to get out of uh, Python, so it's control D uh, and ls here. We can see now we have got this file nohub.out. We can nano into uh, nohub.out, and obviously there's nothing there right now. Um, nano running 1.py. I can't remember which one we ran. Um, let's see. Let's try uh, no hub running two dot pi. Let's see no hub python running two dot pi. Do that, and hopefully that'll put my output. Um, nano. I already forgot what it is. If it's uh, nano no hub dot out. Yeah, so it runs test two, and then we keyboard interrupted it. So now the problem here with that is that obviously to do anything else, uh, we've interrupted the script and it's unable to run. So what if you have maybe two, three, four scripts that you want to run? Um, how do you? How would you actually do that? Well, the next thing that you would do to still utilize NoHub and all this stuff. Uh, would be to do something like this. So you make a new file, and we're going to call this file command.sh. And in here, we're going to we're going to specify a bunch of stuff that we want it to do. So uh, we'll do Python running one dot pi. We'll run it in the background, and then and actually here's what we'll do: we'll do that, and then Python running two dot pi. We'll run that one in the background. Uh, we'll hit yes. Sorry about that. That was something else, not this. Uh, let me turn off my uh, speakers. And so now command.sh will run that. So the next thing that we could do is we could then say no hub, um, then bash command.sh. And now that's going to run using bash, uh, which is like our console basically. It's going to use our console to run command.sh, which contains those files that we've already seen. And it's going to do that um, all in the background here and with the idea of no hub, so if we leave this window and actually log out, um, it won't it won't matter. So anyway, uh, those are just some more basics to using no hub, um, and then also obviously command.sh with bash to control it. You don't have to call it command.sh; you can call it whatever. Um, and yeah, so that should pretty much cover a lot of the basics of at least using the uh, Amazon Web Services to run scripts. Uh, that's probably all I'm going to do for a little bit now uh, with Amazon Web Services. Probably the next thing I'll show you guys is this Python Anywhere. Uh, real interesting service and it gives you pretty much everything that you could have here with AWS. Plus it gives it's a little bit easier. It gives you a nice uh, GUI that you can use and it still gives you, you know, your bash console 
and it comes with Python installed, and like it's like, I think it's got Python 2.6, 2.7, and 3.3 pre-installed, and it's got all like I don't know, probably like 200 modules pre-installed. So it's got all kinds of stuff. Again, I'm not like an affiliate of them. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, at least what I think about their website and stuff like that, and and what they've got. So. Uh, pretty cool stuff coming up, and uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed and maybe learned something uh, with AWS or just even a VPS. You can do all the stuff that we did here with any VPS. Uh, the only difference would be, obviously, uh, if that VPS doesn't come with Python pre-installed, you would need to install Python, uh, but that's a real easy procedure. So uh, anyway, that's going to include this uh, video and mini-series, at least for a little bit. I might show some other odd stuff with AWS, but... Pretty much, you know, the reason why you're going to use EC2 is, is really going to be to do processing of some kind. So maybe I'll show you guys with like a database or something like that. Um, and you can like, you can host like static websites and stuff on EC2. Uh, but it's not really the go-to place if you want to host an actual like website. You'd want to use another uh, VPS or something like that. But anyways, hopefully it was useful for some of you guys. Uh, AWS is totally free for a year anyway. So might as well play around with it and get used to the console. You can't really uh, do anything too bad anyway. If you do, you just restart and play again. So pretty cool stuff. It's a good learning experience. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.